came across a video disparaging Charles Darwin's work as simple parable. This cannot stand. So, let's see what they have to say. Also, there'll be peacocks. Unfortunately, Charles Darwin frequently used parables as part of his scientific method. No, he did not. Darwin used the observations he made and the conclusions he drew from those observations in his scientific method. He observed how finches had different beaks that allowed them better access to food and drew the conclusion that the animals that are best able to survive are the ones that survive and pass on their characteristics. If this could be used for finches, could it explain other animals? This is not parable. It was the seed of his theory of natural selection. Modern evolutionists continue that tradition. Again, they do not use parables. Modern biological scientists use much more thorough testing than was available in Darwin's day, and their findings must be held up to the highest scrutiny. Evolution is not believed just because scientists say so, but, like all accepted science, because the hypotheses have been tested to such a degree, they are no longer disputed and are accepted as theories. No one in the biological community will dispute that animals that are most adept to survive and breed will have a better chance to survive and breed, passing on their fitness. For instance, evolutionists have tried to find an explanation for why some birds have luxurious bright plumage. Yes, and even if scientists couldn't figure out why these birds have such plumage, it would not disprove evolution, but would just be something about the theory we have not discovered yet. But researchers have tried, and as we will see, succeeded in finding and proving an explanation. Evolutionists assert that females prefer the males with the most beautiful plumage. But what does this story prove? This is not a baseless assertion. It's one that has been tested. When given the choice between two males, a peahen will invariably choose the male with the more impressive plumage. Marion Petrie showed that the peacocks with the most impressive plumage are the ones most likely to attract males. She made several observations regarding the mating habits of peafowl. The males with more eye spots on their train had more success with the females. The females did not mate with the first males that courted them, but were choosy in their selection, and often rejected the less impressive males. Believe me, I know what that's like. In Petrie's observations, over 90% of the time out of the males that courted her, the female would choose the male with the most eye spots on its train. It doesn't explain where the colors came from in the first place. Colors come from the property of chemicals. When light hits an object, the color wavelength is either absorbed or reflected. The light that is reflected is the color that can be seen. Mutations cause slight changes in the chemical structure of the peacock's feathers, causing different wavelengths to be reflected, which results in the colors and patterns of eye spots on the peacock's train. It doesn't explain why females prefer showy males. The males that display a brighter train are advertising themselves. They are making a demonstration of their fitness, showing that they can afford to waste energy on impressive displays. A male with more energy will produce stronger offspring. The females that have a desire to copulate with such a male will have a better chance for her chicks to survive, so over time, natural selection breeds for females that prefer impressive plumage and selects for males with impressive plumage. The choices that females make and who to mate with are not conscious decisions, but something that has been bred into them. The ones that are attracted to the most impressive males have stronger offspring, which are more likely to inherit that attraction. The females that are not attracted to the impressive males have weaker offspring, with less chance to survive, so a lack of attraction to impressive displays is weeded out. It doesn't explain colorless birds. Ugh. Not all birds are the same. Some are in an environment where they cannot afford to be so showy, because a showy display would attract predators. Penguins, for example, have a very uniform display. They all look the same. This is because they need their coloring to be simply black and white for camouflage. While swimming, they will blend with the dark water when viewed from above, and from the light sky when viewed from below. This is so they will not get eaten. Birds that are eaten do not have as much of a chance to breed as the ones that are not eaten. So in this case, natural selection selects for penguins that are better able to survive than ones that can make an impressive show. The bower bird also has drab coloring, so it does not stand out with potential displays of plumage that would make it easier prey for predators. They are able to create impressive nest displays to show their fitness to potential mates. Nor does it explain where peacocks originally came from. Protobirds were this. They evolved from dinosaurs. The observed change in fused digits in modern birds can be traced back to carnivorous dinosaurs, Archaeopteryx being one of the links between what we consider dinosaurs and birds. And even if we don't know where birds came from, the theory of evolution would still hold. It would just be another puzzle we don't have an answer for. So the evolutionist's story for the male peacock's bright feathers is, well, just a story, not scientific proof. That is kind of right. Claims themselves are not proof. But observations and testing are good indicators of the correctness of a theory. 
and since the publication of The Origin of Species, we have observed and tested the theory of evolution enough, there is almost no disputing in the scientific community that mutations and natural selection are responsible for the diversity of life. The minutia of the theory has been modified and corrected over time with better research, but the base idea has never been disproven. If you wish to disprove it, you will need evidence to dispute the findings, not baseless claims. Unlike the explanations for the peacock, and biological evolution in general, where observation and evidence are used to back up the claims, the stories in the Bible are just that. Stories. And no proof that fantastical elements exist outside of those legends. 